I want to meet today to sign the contract to get my new place today. Yes, yes. Boom. It's already taking shape. It pretty much already looks like a room. It's a good idea to start talking about sound treatment. You have to understand I've spent my whole life being told, Claudio, turn it down. <laughs> so are you saying that I'm gonna get your latest model of doors from my studio? You will get the very first doors that we produce. Innovation at Dr. Max. If you blow up a kettle, it's no big deal. If you blow up a mixing console, it's a very big deal. Yeah. First panel to go up. <laughs> Look who's here! The amazing Clive Caban! You've seen Clive in my videos because he takes care of my tape machines, of my gear. But also, he's a very famous studio maker. In fact, he has made the studio of Lenny Kravis, amongst many things. So in terms of electricity, the one advice that you gave me on the phone, you said that I should run the electricity far from the audio cables. That's right. Run your power cables along the ceiling and right. drop them down to where you need the power. All right. So, and split the room up into sections. So you want, say, three breakers in the room. Right. So you put your desk and stuff that's close to it on one, outboard with someone on another, and say, machines, Dolby racks, they'll be on their own little breaker. Because if a big machine turns on, draws a lot of current. Yes, I get it. Do I need to put the air conditioning on a different ground? Different, or? different phase. Different phase. Unless, you, unless they're three phase, in which case you can't do anything about it. Okay. Well, I mean, we do have three phase, but the, the system is not three phase. Okay, so put the air conditioning units on one phase and all the technical equipment on another. Because garbage comes off these things, the motors uh, generate garbage as they're going around. Not much, but they suppress that. Right. But when they switch off and on, there's the power in the motor. And if yeah. there's a power failure for some reason, that power that's stored in the motor will be released as a spike, sometimes four or five thousand volts high. I have seen digital equipment die like that under those circumstances. Processor boards even catch fire. If you put them on a separate phase, the problem ceases to exist. I have an idea. Why don't we go eat something and then we sit down, we do some basic drawing. Yeah? Yeah. Good idea? Yeah. Good plan. All right, let's eat something. We had lunch, paper, coffee. Deep. Right. So we're going to do your main distribution box here. Which is that one. Correct. And then you have a feed, this is your studio here. I know it's square and yours isn't, and this is your alternative room that you like. We have three rooms basically, so the main yeah. room, the mixing room, which is that, yeah. and the production room, which is this one. Okay, so there we put a little one there for that. Production room, uh, main room. Mix room. So each of them then, in there, has a little distribution box. So you get cable coming out to that, cable coming out to that, and the cable coming out to that. Each of these will have breakers. Uh, in your mix room you will have desk, feeds, left room, right room, lights, machines. When you say left, right room, what do you mean? Well, you couldn't get here. Left room, oh, yeah, yeah. right room, All right. machines maybe there, maybe there. Depending where you want it, right. you work out where you're going to put it. But you assign them little groups. So you've got one, two, three, say five or six there. And the same for here. So you've got your instruments, your machines, desk, outboard, lights, etc. Six there, six there. And this one here, lights, and I don't know what else you got, so two rings. The guy who's doing the actual wiring up will know how to do all this stuff. Right. The air conditioning is all single phase, is it? I think it's single phase, yeah. Okay, you put that on one of the phases. And you maybe put a kettle on that phase or whatever else you want there. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a little kitchen there. So put that on the same phase as the air conditioning. Okay. Then the other two phases, you can put one for each room and uh, keep it all simple. 
And my electrician will, will know how to do that. Yeah, because you don't need three phases in the studio. No. You only need one phase. And then any link between the rooms, make sure the earth bonding is all good and you shouldn't have any problems. That's super cool. Sockets, you is that how many I want? You've got a rack with maybe three cents in, maybe a couple of uh, fender roads and a couple of other things there. Yeah. Right, you want there. You want a socket for each one of those with a switch. So if you want to isolate it, you can go click. Sockets on walls are generally speaking a lot more reliable than sockets that are lying around on the floor because they're chunky, they're designed to last for a long, long time. Yeah. The other trick you've got is this way the cables, the mains cable, come down from there. They don't lie around on the floor, right. mixing up with the audio. So we run the audio underneath. We run the audio down on the ground. Even if the audio at this stage means just a couple of wire connections to connect one room to the next. That's right. You run that on the ground. You might have to take it up and above at some point and you make sure it doesn't go too close to the main feed. Put something like a 32-way Megami or a 48-way Megami in there. You're never going to run out of ways. I'm thinking of having like eight channels balanced, connect yeah. this room to that, this room to that, and that room to this. That room to there, you've got people walking through, so... So yeah, we have to go, up, go up across. Up. It right. may only be a couple of dBs, but it may be much more. If you're running balanced cables, it makes no difference at all, pretty much. If you're running unbalanced cables, if there's a signal coming out, yeah. the output of your fender roads or something like that is going to be unbalanced. Yeah. It's just the way it is, Yes. right? Most instruments are unbalanced. They don't have balanced electric guitars. Not, not in the world I live in anyway. Yeah, yeah. Should be, but Should be, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if possible, put it in a steel duct, which is earth bonded. And like something like that, you mean? That sort of thing, only a big, bigger one like that, a steel duct like that. That will keep magnetic fields away from the cables on long runs. So it's worth should, considering doing that from the long distance. The long cables, yes, but right. usually the copper shielding on Megami is good enough for rock and roll. Right. <laughs> I have run into problems like this, not so much in this country, but in America. Really in America they have major problems that we don't even come encounter here. The voltage is half, so the current is double, so the magnetic field is four times. So if you try and pick up an electric guitar in America, it hums, it buzzes. See why you need people like Clive? <laughs> it's less oh, what you just said in one sentence just changed everything. Yeah. Let me have my coffee. Good enough for rock and roll. Right. Cat 6, which is apparently better than Cat 5. Oh yeah. There's Cat 7 now. <laughs> <laughs> now I get like the jackass hat. <laughs> There is Cat 7, should you I get, get Cat, cat 7? 7 cables, I don't know how much fast we but, but listen, but then can I, can I mount this one on Cat 7 as well? I believe it's the same connector, it's just a better balanced cable. Cat 7, huh? I guess Cat 7, yeah. Okay, I'll look into it. If, I if mean, not, that, is this still good enough? Almost no, certainly is, I mean, it depends what you're trying to do with it. If, if you're trying to stick video down it, you might have a few problems. If you're not sticking video down it, if it's just digital audio, probably okay. In fact, almost certainly okay, Cat6 is better than anything I've been using. Should they be close to the audio or close to the power? It doesn't matter It doesn't much. matter. Um, it's a balanced cable, so it shouldn't radiate too much garbage. I wouldn't run it alongside unbalanced audio, put it that way. So if I have to choose, probably near the electricity. Yeah, yeah. if you have to choose, but if you cross, cross at right angles. So if I cross, cross at right angles. Yeah. With digital, this doesn't make any difference, but with audio, it's all the difference in the world between the desk working well and the desk failing. You cross all the tracks at right angles, if they right. have to cross. And they usually do have to cross. When I connect the strips of power, we just take you know, one of those rails, what do you call that? It's, it's a U-shaped channel with a top, yeah. so it's like that. And you put the cables inside, then you've got a lid that goes on like that. And you run your cables inside here, yeah, there's your cables. Like a long strip. Yeah. All the sockets earth it. It should be all earth bonded anyway. So, and when you say earth bonded, you mean green and yellow cable that's gonna pass through it anyway. Correct. As far as I know, all this stuff here, this all has to be bonded. All this metal here. We have to bond all the metal. Yeah. You know what? It's time for me to start taking notes. 
What kind of yellow and uh, green cable suggest that? You a piece of four mil squared cable, four mil squared. So you tie them all together mm -hmm. so that anything that, if you've got a cable going through it or something touching it right. that goes faulty, then the whole structure doesn't become live. What it does is it sparks, blows the trip, and everything's safe. Do you see what I mean? I do see what you mean. Normally, you have an earth bar somewhere around here, a piece of brass about so long, with holes in for 16 and 25 mil square cable and 10 mil square cable right. and whatever, and you put your earth distribution from there. So it all comes back to one point, and that goes to the earth bond in there. So you can get by breakers like this. Some of them are big complex boards, others are smaller. Which one would you pick for, for boards? There we go, 100 amp main switch. Eight modules, six ways. Three of them. Let's keep it a bit bigger. Let's Eight modules all together, six ways you've got. This is the one then? Yeah, this is one there, I would say. Three of them? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, that will probably do it. And then I have to buy the switch. Uh, okay. Let's get the Eaton's. This is all populated. We don't want them populated. We want to put our own stuff in. Okay. This is Wilex. Wilex is very good quality. Okay, good then. We want okay. empty things and you buy the bits and put them in. Okay. So you can get two of these. So, and the bits, what bits should I buy? This is a little bit on overkill, but it is an overkill for good reasons. Yeah. Clive, I cannot explain to you how grateful I am to you for giving me all of your knowledge. That's alright, you can always reward me in drinking vouchers. <laughs>